history. Do you know, there was a time whereby I was actually unsettled in terms of who I am, in terms of my family background. I had never met my grandfather. So the only generation that I knew, or relatives that I knew of my blood, was from my dad, his siblings, coming to me. And I didn't, and some other extended family of like the new generation. But I didn't have that peace. You know, peace of understanding where I was coming from. Who was my grandfather? Um, so that's about two year, three years ago. Uh, it's a conversation that I had with my dad. And then uh, my dad took me and sat me down. And then we went to see my grandfather's grave. My grandfather was killed in 1979 uh, by soldiers. Uh, there was another side of affectionalism of Sitoli during the Zipra Zapu exchange back then. Um, was, he a, was he part of the guerrilla? No. Was he into the military? No. He was just an ordinary person who used to work for GMB, Green Marketing Board of Zimbabwe, in Lions then. So we, he was coming from work. He had a night shift around 10 p.m. Um, he got into the house, changing ready to change and go to sleep. And then somebody called him. Zakaria, Zakaria, by his name, and then he went outside. As soon as he went outside, bullets started flying. So it happened to a couple of houses, and a lot of people died. Um, and even when I look at my grandfather, the way he's buried, he's just buried on the side of a rail, a railway line in Lion's Den, and it's not even far off from, from the tar road. And it saddens me because my sister or even the other guys, they haven't actually made an effort, but it's something that I know they're going to be curious and it's going to affect them. So what I'm just trying to come up with is that we need to start looking at our history, where we're coming from and where we're going. And we need to start acknowledging, besides the differences in terms of religious beliefs, okay, you can be a Christian, you can be a traditionalist, you can be Muslim, you can be a Hinduism, whatever you are as a person in Zimbabwe, as a black person. Uh, for me, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, I believe in Christ. But even though it doesn't mean I shouldn't acknowledge and honor Mbuyane Anda for what she did for us. Uh, and it's something that we, I see as black people we lack and we're not doing. We need to start honoring and appreciating our forefathers for what they did. And for us to be here, it, it, it took an untold generation. And generations actually. And it's going to be a pattern that is going to keep on going. And it's like for me, it's like, I think it's a stigma that's going to keep on going for years and for years. Um, it's going to keep on going. Uh, I can give you a good example. Like our, our former president, President Robert Mugabe. Uh, every country that I've traveled to, they actually respect him more than we do here in Zimbabwe. Every time in Zimbabwe, when you hear a Zimbabwean pr uh, person talking about President Robert Mugabe, they're seeing him as a villain. And they don't see what some of the things, the good things, the multitude of good things that he did for this nation. And we don't celebrate him. And the moment you do that, no matter who's the younger person who's going to change this country, it's going to keep on way by we're not going to celebrate our forefathers. And by doing so, it kills the upcoming generation. Do you know why most of the things are not going to change? I used to be someone who used to complain a lot because I expected someone to do that for me, like to create an environment for me. Um, most of the people right now were in power. They, got in, they went to war at the age of 15, 16, right? So many, most of the youth was taken away because we're seeing the war went on for years, but we could have been 10, 15, 20 years, and these ones are on the ground fighting. Um, they didn't have certain understanding of an economy. They, didn't, they were not exposed to certain things. And right now, they're just tired. I, I, don't, I don't think they have the energy to implement certain things that need to be implemented. So that's when we come in as the youth. Instead of complaining, there's sort of a lot of opportunities. Um, one thing I've realized with Zimbabweans, they want a good life. Every black person in Zimbabwe wants a good life. And they expect that good life to be handed to them. No, nothing is handed. You earn your seat on the table. We met you people 500 years ago. Look at us. We've given everything. You are still taking it. In exchange for that, we have got nothing.